Hello everybody and today we continue with move relative. At the end of previous video I said also move additive but I think I'm going to make again video longer than 20 minutes and yeah no just no. So today topic is exclusively move relative and in fact we will do maybe something additional we will introduce some other functionalities like trace now let's begin and again traditionally like in all previous six parts we need to declare an instance of our function block to move relative which is mc move relative let's call it again the same name like all the rest f2 search mc move relative okay semicolon and again we need to call it in our motion fb's action so again f2 instance call move relative okay A mistake good again mandatory input and that's about it regarding the program call let's go to visualization and we are really starting to run out of space and because I want to use move absolute together in move relative, I will place move relative visu close to move absolute. Good. Now just to add reference to instance of our function block. And we are set. So log in. Let's make a download. Okay, good. We run the PLC. Before we begin, let's do one other thing, and this is add object trace. Now this functionality is highly used in debugging the problem and it's very nice functionality. So what we will trace is axis f set position. We will not add too many variables, but then also I would like to see move relative execute and we will add move absolute execute and then we will use cursors to see in fact what have we done we will trace this with iterate task let's go to advance uh, measured cycle trace buffer looks good okay right click we will convert this to multi-channel that we have for every variable we have one separate channel and that's it now we can right click download trace and we have our trace what we will do is now show how move absolute works First, enable the drive and let's set it to zero. So we will execute MC set position to zero. If we go to the trace, maybe we can even push it here. It's going to be a bit crowdy, but let's do it. So we have our trace running. And now let's execute move relative. So we will put distance 20 with some small speed let's use 5 and acceleration we'll use 100 100 
So if we execute, we see we have here distance. So we will on execute move every time for a distance of 20. Oh, sorry. So if I now go here and zoom out with scroll, now I'm, I pause it a bit. We see that we have on our execute we started to create a ramp, here we have some acceleration, then we have constant speed and we moved to our position. If we now reset view, we are at 20, if we execute again, so oh, again me, so move relative is moving from certain point for a distance to another point. Now what will happen if you start your move relative during a previous movement? Let's simulate that with move absolute. First, we will execute set position to zero. Let's go to our trace and reset view. And we will set move absolute to go half a turn with velocity 5 so the rest of the settings we will execute exactly the same like in relative and somewhere during this movement while axis is still somewhere let's say it's close to half of the moment we will execute move relative let's see what will happen move absolute And ah, let's do it now. Move relative. Excellent. And let's stop our trace. And let's analyze the trace what happened. First of all, you see here that when we hit move relative, it aborted previous movement. So this is one clue. Let's put it in the middle. Let's scroll. And because we have the same ramps, we don't see any difference on a blue line. So let's use cursor. And now what we want to see is zoom in. We want to see here is our rising edge where we started move relative. Mm, let's do it like this. And we will add another cursor. We will move to somewhere here. Where is approximately the end? Maybe I should also put here a done bit from move relative. However, we see that at the moment when we executed, until the axis came to, to the final position that it's at the moment, we have delta of 20. And this is exactly what we put on move relative. So this is description of the behavior of move relative. In next video, we will use the same trace and we will try to execute move additive and see the difference in both scenarios like we also did for move relative. That's it for today. It was very nice and short video. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.